What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video, and a little while back I did a video where we wrote over 10 terabytes to this single SanDisk Extreme Pro SD card. And today, we're here with a bit of an update and also to the start of some extreme tests for this extreme little card. Now, as a quick little recap for those who didn't exactly catch that last video, when it comes to making these YouTube videos and also to the other contract work that I do make, uh, I do exclusively use SanDisk is Extreme Pro memory cards. This was my only 64 gig card and I had a number of 32 and uh, 16 gig cards from a while back and I always use this card as my number one card as they offer the speed and the warranty that I'm after and they just work, especially for client work. I've never missed a shot without jinxing myself. Uh, I've never missed a shot with a SanDisk memory card. I've used a number of others and they've unfortunately died on set or they've not worked properly and I've missed a shot but when it comes to dedicated client uh, contract work, definitely this gear all day. And as a bit of a subsequent after that, well, the same gear that I use to make client videos, well, I go ahead and use to make YouTube videos because it'd make no sense if I've got nice camera gear sitting up on the shelf and I use a webcam to record YouTube video. So might as well use all the gear that I do have. Now in the last video that we did talk about, I managed to write about 10 terabytes worth of data to it. And I knew this because I filled up about 10 terabytes of hard drives and realized that I basically only exclusively used this single memory card. Now in doing so, we lost about 17 and percent performance on this older card. And then fast forward today, we're looking at about 17 terabytes written to this guy and a bit more than 17.5% loss, although not that much more. Now, when it comes to writes, the reason why we're so concerned about this is because Flash has, generally speaking, a limited amount of times that you can write to it. You can read from it as many times as you want, but the more times you write to a Flash chip, well, the closer it is to going ahead and dying. Modern SSDs that we do check out on the channel right there are uh, all have a built-in programmed life. So if you can somehow decipher that and figure out how long it is, you can basically figure out how long to the gigabyte until the drive will die. Now, these numbers are generally not published because there's a bunch of different variances from things like controllers dying before the flash and things like that. But all in all, when it comes to flash memory modules, they do have a certain amount of time before they start losing performance and then die. And 10 terabytes to a single 64 gigabyte card is definitely a lot of writing. Now you might be thinking, okay, 17 and a half percent, that's not really that much performance loss on a 95 megabyte per second SD card. And to be honest with you, yeah, I totally agree didn't lose that much performance. But when it comes to actually use in a camera, that 17.5% is an absolute night and day difference. For instance, here is a video shot of the back of my GH5 where we're just recording some stuff around the studio. And when I hit stop recording, we can see that it takes quite a moment to actually process the data as we can see in this little corner by the little writing card there. Whereas if I use the brand new SD card I just picked up, it finishes almost instantly. And that is a 17.5% percent performance decrease that has caused that much of a slowdown. Now sure, making YouTube videos like this, talking head videos, maybe some b-roll on the set behind me, isn't the world's biggest deal. However, a lot of the contract work that I do is actually on location or at events where you might be filming over here, you hit stop and then all of a sudden behind you something's happening and you need to spin around and hit record once again. If you've got that much of a buffer time, things aren't going fast and you're going to miss a shot. And I really wanted to actually track down what kind of a performance loss we actually get over time and how that translates to the real world. Thus, this video and this series. Much like what we did with the Seagate video, I want to see extended over a longer period of time what kind of performance loss we actually are seeing and whether the performance loss that I did see with this particular card was exclusive to this card. Maybe I've got just a dud unit or something like that. Maybe it is just this card. So I'm going to be going ahead and just like our Seagate video, running the card as I do daily, but also to keep you guys updated to see what kind of performance loss we do get. But speaking of performance, before we see what kind of loss we get, we need to see where we are starting. So firing up Crystal Disk Mark, we do find pretty decent numbers. Atto and also to HD tune back this up. When it comes to synthetics, these guys are fast, reliable, and definitely on point. Now our card reader is based on PCI connectivity, so we've got no USB 3 bottleneck or overheads or anything like that. We are straight 
into the PCI Express slot, so there is definitely no slowdowns there. In real world testing, as we did just mention before, when we hit stop recording on our camera, it obviously stops recording and is ready to go once again. And the GH5 with its 180 FPS, fast slow motion feature that it does run, I can record unlimited 180 FPS straight to this card, or rather the card that's in the camera right now, but I can record to it absolutely no problems. Again, recording on card, synthetics are all 100% fine. And this sounds pretty much what you'd expect, and honestly, whilst the numbers aren't 95 by 95 as what you might be expecting out of the box, they are definitely within reason and do perform really, really well. Now, if we just hold on a minute and we can actually do a little bit of a prediction, because we've already got a card with 10 terabytes written, if we benchmark that and then make this graph right here, we can see at zero terabytes versus 10 terabytes, we can see quite the linear drop off and actually that isn't too bad and would be reasonable to expect that kind of a drop off. However, as we all do know, when it comes to flash, it's not so much like that. When it comes to flash, it's working, it's working, it's working, oh, all of a sudden it's not working anymore. And that's generally how flash goes. So whilst the graph looks like this, when we do our sort of one point to the other, However, I think the graph that we're going to see in terms of these tests is that it works really, really well, and then we'll get to sort of the nine, eight terabyte kind of marker, and then we'll start to see our fall off. I think it's gonna fall off relatively quickly, and then sort of platter out and sort of stay at that lower speed. But I guess what will happen, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, to be clear though, I don't actually think SanDisk is a bad company, nor do I think they're making bad products. It might sound really terrible that I've managed to write 10 terabytes to this thing and it's lost a bunch of performance and can't even record properly on the camera. Sure, that definitely sounds like a bit of a bash towards the company. However, I've had a number of other memory cards from other manufacturers die within six months of the use and workload that I do put on these particular cards. Yes, they're not bulletproof, and I'm not trying to make them sound better than they actually are. They do wear out, just like everything else. However, I've had a better run with SanDisk cards than some other manufacturers on the market. And ideally, when it comes to the workload that I do put on these cards, ideally, I should have three, maybe even four SD cards that I cycle through constantly to make sure the wear is evenly spread out across a bunch of different cards so I don't get one card that's super worn out and the rest of my cards being completely and utterly fine. And also, too, the work that I do with this camera and the SD cards and all that kind of stuff isn't just making YouTube videos. So if you're looking at SD cards to use for your YouTube channel and maybe you're making some videos on the weekend and stuff like that, honestly, there are still a lot of other options out there and the SanDisk ones are still great, but it just so happens that a lot of my work does come through client work and a lot of recording does get done to this camera with really high bit rates. So there's a lot of data flying to this thing and a lot of work every single day, I think. Uh, in 2018, if I average out how much I shot, basically I've shot for at least 20 to 30 minutes every single day for the past 365 days, approximately. Obviously, some days more, some days less, and it kind of all balances out. But just about every single day, I have my camera turned on and recording to the 64 gigabyte card that's just in the A slot. So there's definitely a lot of work, and I'd have to say that my use case of the camera is a little bit more than what an average user might use. If you just make making some YouTube videos, or if you're just doing the couple things on the weekend with friends and stuff like that, you shouldn't be expecting this kind of a workload. However, if you're doing this thing every single day, then uh, yeah, the workload can be rather high. And that said, I guess the warranty on this card could probably cover it. However, the argument can be still made. It's only a 17% loss. And in the real world, the card still records 4K video. I can still do everything with my GH5. It just so happens there's a little bit of a delay after I finish pushing record. So it's not exactly broken and I don't think any warranty on the planet's gonna cover this, but it's just general wear and tear that you will want to keep in mind when you are putting extreme workloads on your gear. And if I was being completely honest, if I was only using my gear to make YouTube videos, I would have absolutely no problem with running this card for another 10 terabytes, another year, two years, or whatever it may be, because when I'm doing a talking head video, I can sit around for a while and let that card buffer up. It doesn't actually affect uh, the recording of the video. So that's about it, and we kind of reached the end of this video. We've established our baseline and starting point for what kind of performance we can expect out of a brand new card. We've seen a glimpse into what the future might hold, but now it's all about testing this guy on a consistent basis so we can plot a graph and see 
see where we are at over time and I guess we'll check in at about six or so months time to see how the card is faring and then in a year and four months like what we did with this guy to see what happens when we put about 10 or more terabytes on this particular card. Again as we did say when we're looking at that graph I think we're going to get perfect performance until 8 to 10 terabytes and then we're going to start seeing a drop off but uh, overall I think we're going to get decent enough performance out of this guy but do let me know what you think down in that comment sections. After we've taken a look at a number of flash devices do you think we're just going to see perfect performance? or a more of a linear drop-off? Do let me know down below. If you want to pick up a SanDisk Extreme Pro memory card, I've left them linked down in the description box, both the full-size SD card and also to the micro SD card. Uh, you can find them linked down there. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.